Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. As I promised in my last video, today we are kicking off an exciting Angular series where we will cover all the major features introduced from version 16 to version 19. I have prepared a comprehensive PPT that highlights all the features Angular has introduced in the last 18 months. And one key theme that stands out across this update is Signal. So Signals are basically the heart of Angular evolution and they are game changer for building reactive and performant web application. So before we dive into Angular 19 features in future video, it's crucial to understand what signal are, what they can do and why they are such an important advancement in Angular. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back and let's dive into the signals in Angular. So what is signal? So it is nothing but a latest reactive primitive that transform how we handle state and reactivity. Or simply we can just say that signals are a way to manage reactive data. Uh, think of them like variables, but when their value changes, right? So we automatically notify anything that depends on them like a template or any other signals. So this was just a very small theory about signal, but to understand the signal, let's try to take a look at this counter example, what I have prepared. So here in this counter application, we can increment, we can decrement, and we can also click on reset to reset our value. Okay. And to make this application, we can do that in Angular by declaring some property. We can increment the property by swing plus plus and stuff like that. But now we are going to prepare this application with signal. Let me open the VS code and try to explain you like what is this code. So over here, right? So this is what the UI looks like. So here on the top, we have the header, the count, and this is where the count what you see. And then we have the button in the bottom, which does the increment, decrement and the reset in the middle, right? And to prepare this, what I have, I have created a variable, which is this, my property count. And there is something called as double count. What it does, this is also a getter, which I have created. And what it does, it just doubles whatever the count is. And then we have something called as increment button, decrement button, and the reset button. So this is how we were able to do previously without signal. But now with signal, let's see how we can do things here. So now this can change to signal. So that's how we, we go ahead and try to create a signal first. So there is signal, which something comes from angular slash core. So what you can do, you can just go here and say signal. Okay. And once you have the signal, you can go and create your variable by using signal. You can say signal and inside that you can initialize the value. Okay. So your signal got created here. Now what you have to do, right? You have to listen to the change to this signal. Like whenever I click on increment button, the signal is changing. So there is something called as computed. So, so what we can do here, so we can create a double count. Okay, so we have a property double count and we will make use of computed signal. So there is something called as computed again coming from angular slash core. And now what this will do, this will always listen to this change. And whenever the count changes, this will go and multiply it by two and return to this double count. And now if I hover on this double count, this double count also is nothing but a signal, okay, which is of type number, right? And now what we need to do with the signal, with the signal, we have to update the value. Right. So what we can do, we can say this dot count. So signal has few more things. So if I say signal dot, then you can see we have something called as set. There is something called as update. So we are going to take a look at this update first. So whenever I click on update, so what this will take, this will take the previous value and in the previous value, it will add plus one and it will return back in the signal, which means whenever you click on increment, the value will get added by one same thing we can do it over here as well for the decrement so let me have it over here and and this one it will be just a minus one so based on previous value if it is five then please make it four so five minus one which is four and that four will get returned inside this particular signal okay which is our count and now i want to reset it which means i want to return to a defined value okay when i say update what update does updates is getting updated based on your previous value. But now I want to change this value to a defined value, which is zero and how that can be done with signal. So there is something called as your signal dot set. So by this set, you can actually go back to the original value or what value you want to define to your signal. Okay. And the moment you do that, right, your application is ready with a signal and that's how easy signals are which means going forward what i see right the signals are going to be the replacement of the declaration of the variable how we were doing it and thanks to it because now we don't require anything called as zone js for it to get updated because signals are smart enough to trigger that update because as i have told you right they automatically notify anything that depends on them 
like template or any other signal so now let's try to use this inside the template so if you go over there right so can you see now we are getting some bunch of errors and this error is because signal has to be invoked so it is kind of you're invoking a function so you need to have this bracket everywhere so that to make it work right so the moment I add all of those, so let me do it for all, right? So I have updated all of those as a function and now let me save the changes. The moment I save the changes, everything got saved. And now if I go back to my application, can you see the moment I click on increment, my signal is changing and the signal automatically updates the template and also the double count what you see over here. So it is something kind of a side effect which is happening based on the change of the signal. So talking about side effect, there is something called as effect as well, which is again coming from angular slash core. And now what you can do, right? So whenever a signal is changing, you can do the tracking of it by using the effect. Okay. So in the constructor, if you take a look, right, I have added this something like that. So I have an effect and inside this block, right, I can call my signal here. Okay. Which means whenever there is change to this signal, my side effect will get triggered. Okay. If I go back to the application, if I just inspect element, if I go in the console, and whenever I click on this, right, so whenever my signal is changes, this goes and calls that particular block of code, which is there inside the effect. So that effects get triggered whenever the ch there is change in this particular signal, right? So that's the magic of signal in Angular. And that's how it is helping us to achieve this reactivity. Okay. Now let me take a look at another example, what I have prepared because this is just a counter application. Now let me just show you the power of signal that we cannot just create a counter application, but we can also create something called as a to do app. Again, it's not that big of application, but I think it's still better than a counter app. So here you can see we have a signal to do list and what this application does, if I click on this add, it just adds a new value here dynamically. And here we can go and update some of my to do that. Yeah, this is completed. This is completed. And after that, for example, if you want to clear the comp completed task so that also you can do it from here can you see only the completed one got removed and we still have this four and five okay if you want to delete anything you, that also is possible by clicking on this x button and if you clear everything so that's what it is so now you have no to do's yet and you can say add one below something like that so this is a very small application now let's take a look at this application how i have built this using signal okay let's go to your vs code and open up a to do signal dot component. So over here again, you can see the title on the top. We have a div. We are using ng4 for now. Yes, because currently we don't know about what is control flow. That's why I'm not using at the rate for and at the rate f that will be covered in the next video where I'll talk about the control flow. Okay. But now let's take a look at the code, what we have. So here we have this particular checkbox, which we can click which actually calls a toggle whenever there is a change we have toggle completed and in the bottom here sorry in the bot in the middle what we have we have the title we have the cross button to remove the to do and all of those now let's take a look at the properties how we have defined it so now what we are doing right now we have created a signal of to do's where we have initialized it with few values like we have three to do already pre-filled with the completed as false now, if I refresh this page, right? So that's what you see the initial three to do. Okay. And now what I want to do, right? Suppose as I have told you, right? So if you want to update any signal, okay, if you want to update a signal, what you use, there is something called as dot update. So whenever I click on add, what I say, I want to do update. So I say my signal dot update, you take the previous value, you destructure them and you add a new value dynamically. Okay. Which is to do's dot length plus one. I'm just adding one one extra okay as compared to the previous length and with the completed as false cool now if i want to remove a item which means again i want to update or i want to set i want to update right so if i go back again here so i want to say remove so what this remove also does so it will again say signal dot update takes the previous and filter out the index which is not matching, which, which means the index what we have selected. Okay. So you want to filter out from the list. So that's what it does. So if I select this, so this will filter out from the signal and it will go and update it. So if I remove this, so can you see my signal got updated and now there is only one value in the signal. Okay. So that's how we are able to make use of this update. Now going forward, there is something called as clear completed, if you remember. So if I click on this, this is clear. And if I click on this button, so it will remove everything. So how is that possible? Again, that's possible by making use of this update. Okay. Which we are trying to go and filter and we are checking 
if this is completed then go go and filter the all of them right now so that's what things i wanted to explain you about okay the signal is not just there to create a counter application but yeah also you can see some another example where we are actually using the dot update and dot set and based on that we are trying to update our signal okay and again to use the signal value what you use so you just go ahead and use them as a function kind of thing and you see we have this to do here and we can also see it over here on the top as well we have let to do of to do's and this is nothing but my signal okay and that's how reactively you can update your signal right now let's take another example okay because i'm here to build your confidence in term of signal like how you can use signal in your project right now let's take one more example which is something called as products okay so let's go to this route and here you can see that we have an awesome product here where we have a 10 percent off right now whenever there is a price change happens for example currently the price is 100 and based on 100 i have a discount of so my discount price is 90 correct because the 10 rupees gets cut off from it now suppose i'm trying to change the value suppose there is a sale happening and now i want to change my value from 100 to 50 okay and see the moment i change this to 50 50 reactively it also updates my original price and the discounted price here okay if i change it to 75 can you see it is again recalculating and it is updating it on the template and all of these are so reactive right if i change this 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 so see the magic so you save 10 you save 750 all of those values are in sync now whenever there is change happens to the signal now let's take a look at this example so if i go to the product signal dot component what i have created for you so here you have a basic html ready okay where i have the product name the discount percentage right then we have the original price then we have a discounted price and there is something called as update original price what we are updating okay uh, don't do it this is i just used any because yeah this is not a good practice to do but yeah this was just for the demo purpose right and then if i go in the bottom that's where we have the quick actions where we have 25 50 75 100 i'm using this ng4 and based on that i am rendering these buttons okay now if we just go in the bottom how i have used it to to make it work like that so first of all we have a product signal can you see we have a signal where now i have an object can you see we have a product object which is nothing but my signal now a writable signal and what i am doing right so whenever there is change right i want to calculate the discounted price so based on my product what i have what value i have in my product i want to update the discount price so that's what i have did i have used a computed here right why computed because any change will happen to my product it will go and do the computation for me cool now here if you see that inside this computed now from this product i am restructuring my original price and discount price and now i am doing some calculation so whenever there is a change to the prices it will recalculate the percentage and sorry recalculate the price and that price will get stored inside this discounted price so this discounted price is nothing but my signal okay and if you take a look right this is what my discounted price is what you see here and if you go on the top as this is signal so this will be used here over here can you see i have a discounted price which is shown over here so you save this and there is one more on the top right so that's how i'm trying to make use of this inside uh, inside our application so now we have seen that we have a signal and based on the signal we have a computation done to calculate the discounted price now i am doing an update of my price right so there is something called as update original price which takes a new price from the template and based on that what is happening here can you see my product is getting updated okay so that's what the power of update is this update is very very handy so this updates again inside this you will take the previous value based on the previous previous value you are trying to return a new value by updating the original price which means that my signal is getting changed if my signal is getting changed it will go and update it will go and notify wherever it has been used so first place it is used here and this another place it is used over here as a price as a product component on the top right so because we are using product product everywhere so whenever there is a change it will go and update that okay and that's the power of signal is and that's what i have made a very small example just to make you guys understand about what is signal and what are some terms what we are using in signal so now after this video you should remember four things there is something called as signal and the signal has something called as set signal has something called as update and there is something called as effect 
okay so if you know these four things which means you are ready to start your things in your project by using signal that's all for today guys i hope this quick introduction to signal in angular gave you a clear idea of how they are reshaping reactivity in angular applications so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to stay updated with more exciting angular content so in the next video we will deep dive into the another feature which was introduced in angular version 17 and that is defer and control flow syntax so hit that bell icon to notified with the next video update and also if you got any question or thoughts so please drop them in the comments i would love to hear from you until next time happy coding and keep building amazing apps Bye bye